Hi, in this lesson we're going to be looking at the sinusoidal equation to describe a travelling wave. So we're going to be looking in detail at the equation y of x and t is equal to a sine kx minus omega t plus phi. To start with we're going to consider a pulse and we're going to use that pulse to show why we have a negative sign in this equation for a wave which is travelling in the positive direction. So that may be a bit counterintuitive which is why we'll show it in detail now. Okay, what we're going to look at now is a pulse travelling to the right, so in the positive direction, along a piece of string. Now this will get a bit mathematical, but hopefully you'll be able to physically understand what that maths is telling us. Okay, so this is the pulse at some time t is equal to zero. So what we've written down here, that y, so we're looking at what the value of y is, and we're looking at it at x is equal to x naught, so that's this value of x naught here, and this is t, so this is our y of x t like we had just a second ago on the screen. And we're saying that that is equal to some height function. So f could really be anything. I mean, in this case, it's describing the shape of this curve here, but it doesn't really matter what curve we have. It's just some function describing the height. And so we're saying the height at position x naught is equal to this thing. So we're just equating these two things. So our height function is defined for t is equal to zero. And what we're going to do now is consider, well, what happens sometime t later? Sometime t later, our pulse has moved along and it's now at this position here. Now, you know that distance is equal to speed times the time. So we know that the difference between x naught and x dash is equal to vt. So x dash is equal to our x naught plus vt, the distance the wave has traveled in our time t. Okay, so what we're going to do is rewrite this equation now, except now we're considering this point here. So we've got y, x is now x prime, and the time has gone on from t equals 0 to t equals t, so it's now t. But the pulse is exactly the same pulse. It's described by the height function. Our pulse has not changed, it's just shifted along. And we said, well, its highest point is now at x prime. And so this is equal to f of x zero. This height here is the same as the height over in this diagram here, is exactly what we've said. So that's all we're saying with this part of the equation here, the height here is the same as the height was back here. Now we're going to do a little mathematical trick. x naught from this expression here is equal to x prime minus vt. So we're replacing this x naught with x minus vt. So this is important. It's showing us that as we move our wave, fun our wave moves forwards, we have to kind of to get the height and the function. We consider where it was back at this time. So, so that's why we have that negative sign there. So when the wave travels to the right, we need to subtract the vt from x. So that's why we have that negative sign in the equation to describe a wave. Okay, so for a pulse traveling along a string, if it's traveling to the left in the negative direction, we actually put a positive sign here. And just some terminology that you may come across, particularly later when we get onto quantum mechanics and things, you might see these terms, so it's worth just mentioning them. So sometimes this function is called a wave function as it describes the shape of a wave. So this, we said, just describe the height at each point, so just the shape of the wave. And the wave form is the shape of the wave determined at any particular time. So that f of x zero, if we just had f of x, that tells us the height at every point at that time. So that is known as a wave form. Okay, let's try a little problem now. Remember that as the wave moves forwards, you need to subtract vt from the position to describe later times.